plants toward the sun, we begin to heal one by one. By Argentina. Kotsky doesn't know what he's expecting when he walks through the front doors of the dorm building, but he should have known that all 19 of his classmates wouldn't ignore the fact that he's holding a potted Venus flytrap in his hands. He scowls at the obvious stairs. Everyone seated around the couches and floor, hanging out with each other since they don't have anything else to do on the weekend. Well, he questions eventually, when he's met with nothing more than silence. He refuses to break eye contact. Are you going to say anything, or are you going to all sit there and gawk like idiots? Kirishima is the one who reacts first. His face breaks into a grin, and he waves over to the blonde. Baku bro, what'd you get at the store? Katsuki hoffs, holding up the plant for the other teen to see. This is my Venus flytrap, and if any of you losers even so much as attempt to lay a finger on it, you'll regret having tried. A plant? Kaminari exclaims, leaning over the armrest of the couch in order to get a better look at Kartsky. That's so cool! I didn't know you were interested in such domestic things, Bakugo. Shut up, Kartsky states. My therapist recommended that I either do this or try some sort of knitting, and I sure as hell wasn't about to take up the second offer, so suck it up and deal with it. Kaminari puts his hands up in the air in a placating gesture. Okay, man, you do you. That's one badass plant, by the way. Yeah, Kirishima agrees. It's very manly. Is that even allowed in the dorms? Ida asks, pondering. Are you sure this isn't against the school rules, Bakugo? I know exactly what the school rules are, Four Eyes, Bakugo says. This isn't the same thing as a pet. You extras aren't even allowed to interact with it, so it shouldn't be any of your concern anyway. Aww, Uraka says. Can we help choose names, though? If you want to do that, then you can go and buy a plant of your own. I already have one in mind. What is it? Yayozro asks, curious. Koski considers this. He knows what the name is, but he doesn't know if he wants to reveal it. An abbreviation should work. As PM, he says, turning on his heel and striding towards the direction of the elevator. I'm not going to tell any of you what it stands for, so good luck figuring it out. When Kotsky told the others to go get a plant of their own last week, he didn't actually expect it to happen. He also didn't mean for them to take his words literally. But that's apparently what happened, because half the class is in the kitchen, trying to fill some spray bottles with water. He didn't walk downstairs just to see this mess. He's about to exit before they notice his presence, but Tokoyami catches him first. Bakugo, he calls out. And Katsuki grimaces. What? He snaps. Take a look at this, he says. I took your advice and got this. Meet Ebony, my black pearl pepper. Before Katsuki is able to respond and call him out for how dumb Ebony sounds, Sato jumps into the conversation. We're showing our plants? He questions, his eyes lighting up. He slides his own purchase across the counter. This is some sweet basil, and his name's Sugarlord. Mina seems to pick up on their interaction, and gladly flaunts her pink hydrangea. This is alien mama. What do you think of it, dude? Oh my god, Katsuki mutters, resisting the urge to facepalm. More of his classmates come swarm him, and that's how he ends up finding out that Ida got a bonsai, Kirishima got an aloe vera, and Hagakure got a harebell, and Midoriya got a cactus, because he can't take care of plants for shit. Katsuki regrets being the catalyst for this chain reaction. As much as Katsuki regrets being the catalyst for his entire class being plant hoarders, though, he's still annoyed at a few of them. Not for getting a plant, but rather for not having one. And if his annoyance is more concern than anger, then no one needs to know except for him. One person in particular who's been keeping his eye on is Todoroki. The boy has been getting a lot better since the beginning of the year, and he's far from the closed off person he once was. But it's still not enough. He's still more reserved than the rest of his peers, and if he's going to spend a good amount of time holed up in his room, then he might as well have some company. It's nearing his birthday anyway. So Katsuki will be able to hand the snowdrops over without being too suspicious or overly generous. 
When he knocks on Todoroki's room door, said person is quite surprised to see him there. Katsuki rolls his eyes, pushing the plant into his arms without so much as an explanation. He pulls out a piece of folded paper from his pocket as well. These are the instructions to take care of it, he says. Todoroki raises his eyebrows, accepting the printed sheet. Um, thank you, Bakugo, he says awkwardly. Yeah, sure, don't mention it. Todoroki pauses for a second, and then completely off topic. Is the name of your plant present Mike? Bakugo snorts. Why would I name it present Mike? You're a terrible conspiracy theorist. Todoroki thinks. Then is it... Okay, stop guessing. I don't have the time for this. I'll let you know. Really? Yeah. PM stands for photosynthesis, motherfucker. Wow. Did you expect any different from me? Aizawa opens his eyes to the sound of the teacher's lounge door opening. Black eyes lock onto crimson ones, and the man doesn't bother to move from his sleeping bag. Do you need something, problem child? I was looking everywhere for you. Why are you here this early in the morning? Kotsky asks. Aizawa shrugs, or at least he attempts to, in the position he's got himself trapped in. It's more convenient when lessons begin for the day. I can just get up and walk over to the classroom. Kotsky sighs, exasperated. This is exactly the kind of behavior he's attempting to rectify with what he's about to offer his teacher. Lifting the box in his right hand, he gestures at it with his left. The top is open, but from where the man is lying down, he can't exactly tell what's inside it. Aizawa squints. What's that supposed to be? Kotsky reaches in and pulls out the potted succulent. You're going to be taking care of this. Kotsky states. Aizawa's squint turns into a glare. What? Kotsky isn't deterred. I'm not going to stand for you refusing to take care of yourself anymore. Hell, the last time you actually picked up after yourself and somewhat paid attention to the way you presented yourself to the world was during Kamino, and then you just went back to your same old ways afterward. I'm not letting that continue, so take care of this plant, and in turn, I hope you can learn how to care for yourself as well. He reaches forward and places the gift on the coffee table. If I find out that this dies, you're in for it. Yue's getting a garden, Aizawa announces to his students, albeit a little grudgingly. He makes eye contact with Kartsky for a split second, as his gaze roams around all the teenagers in the room, sitting at their desks. Principal Nezu thinks it's a good idea for everyone in this school to bond, not just this class, adults included. Wait, really? Izuko exclaims. Azuraka squeals. This is going to be so manly, Kirishima remarks, while Kaminari groans. More students? Yayozu asks. This will be interesting. I hate waking up early, Mina says. Aizawa ignores them all. We're going to begin with the lecture now. You can talk about this later on your own time. Stop using your damn eyes half and half, Kotsky says, irked. You're wasting your time trying to create it and then having to melt it when the garden hose is right there. Todoroki glances over. The 1B students keep trying to take it. And sure enough, as they speak, Monoma and Kendo are a few feet away, fighting over who gets to fill their watering can first. Ida, who's inspecting the plants, looks over at Todoroki and Kotsky. Maybe you should go talk to them. We encourage socialization with the other classes as well. The only way I'm going to speak to any of those extras is if I'm arguing with them, Kotsky replies. Peaceful negotiations only. This is a constructive activity. I'll stay on this side of the garden, thanks. I'll be the diplomat. Kotsky buries his face into his hands. I think you're taking this too seriously. Gardening is some serious business. Todoroki laughs softly. This is more entertaining than I expected. The corner of Kotsky's lips twitch upward slightly. He sneaks a glance at the rest of his peers in the vicinity. They seem to be enjoying themselves, for the most part. 
Maybe this new development will do all of them some good in the end. Kotsky's glad. 